If there's a word which I suppose would dominate my thinking, it is humanism. And there's a link to Italy, of course, the whole humanistic philosophy and the Renaissance. I was born in Florence. As it happens, I was born more as overlooking Brunelleschi's wonderful dome. I was strongly influenced by my mother, who was a potter. Coming from Italy, with very modern views, she sheltered me from fear of the new, the shock of the new. I was greatly influenced by her view, and my father's too, of art as being part of life. Of all the greatest things that I enjoy, it's culture, and aesthetic is a primary part of culture. Humanizing is a critical element about planning and architecture and creating buildings that encourage, and spaces that encourage, that humanism. I believe strongly in ethics, fairness, ethos. Public space is the physical manifestation of human values. Individuals have rights to public space. There should be a law that everybody can see, at least a tree from their window. I was very much involved with my teens in political and social environment. And of course, campaigning is a critical part of this. I've always been more interested in periods of change. Therefore, I prefer early Renaissance, early Gothic, and early modern, in a way, to over-rich architecture of the later periods. I'm searching for an aesthetic which allows for change, the ability of buildings to respond like a sunflower opening to the, to the sun. Buildings have to open and absorb the sun, or buildings have to adapt. I have a very beautiful watch from my mother. It's very much inside out because it wears its machine on the outside. It's a very beautiful watch in terms of it's all colors, and I love color. You see the workings of it. So in a way, it encapsulates what I do. We as architects are both scientists and artists. You express the process of construction, the way you put a building together. Materials are, are a very key part of, of the aesthetic of a building. It's the humanization of the parts so that they are legible, just like my watch. All those little bits in the watch give scale. Scale is key to architecture. It's your hand, and your hand is really the imprint that you put on everything. Things out of scale means that there is no relationship to the human body, to your hand, and then you feel frightened. And in fact, that's exactly what fascist architecture is. As no man is an island, nor is any building or any space, everything is flowed from one to the other. The beginning of a city is the room. And then you put a lot of rooms and you make a house, and then you make lots of houses and you make a city. So there isn't a very clear definition between inside, outside, or small and large. It's how you give order to those pieces. I see the earth which we inhabit. When you fly over at nighttime, you see all the lights on, you don't see borders. That's how it should be. But the idea that the globe is made out of many races, many cultures, and that you work with these and they enrich you, it's not about terrible division which we are, we are faced with. Poor countries, rich countries, is about the intermingling of people within a state which is fair. What influences most is family and people. My wife, Ruthie. We do nearly everything together. We discuss politics together. We discuss architecture. It's a very much one person divided into two. I wasn't very good at school, um, but I've learned a lot from my colleagues and I have been very fortunate. I can't say enough. It's only through teamwork that we can achieve that, through sociologists, through engineers, through scientists, and clients. I believe in teamwork. I often use a very wonderful statement when Athenians were made citizens, they said, I shall leave the city more beautiful than I entered it, which I always think is a fantastic democratic and visionary idea.